The reason I fell in love with Hollow Knight is because of the amazing interconnected world and the astounding details within them to create an amazing atmosphere for each area for you to explore. Every aspect from this game, from its bosses to its lore and gameplay, is all amazing of course. But this is what in my opinion Hollow Knight excels at. You can clearly see the developers put a lot of time and effort into the art, designs and backgrounds, making everything come to life. However, there is one other key element that is crucial to build an atmosphere that Team Cherry definitely didn't overlook. And that, my friends, is music and sound design. Now, I may not be Mozart or have any musical experience in the slightest, but I do have ears that can listen and I occasionally listen to Big Time Rush. Wanna be famous, famous. So I think I'm pretty much the perfect fit to talk about today's topic. We are going to look into what makes the Hollow Knight music and sound design so perfect. And yes, of course, it's obvious that the soundtrack is really good. There's no arguing in that. But that applies to thousands and thousands of other games as well. And plenty of games, in my opinion, mostly from bigger companies, outshine Hollow Knight's soundtrack by a mile with their amazing orchestral live recorded high budget music. But we're not here to directly compare music from different games with each other or anything like that. I'm here to tell you how Hollow Knight nailed, pun unattended, the perfect soundtrack and sound design for its own game and how that brought Hollow Knight's atmosphere, the aspect I praise the most of this game, to its absolute peak. <laughs> Looks and sound go hand in hand when building atmosphere for a game, and you can't have one without the other. But what some people may overlook is that music and sound design probably has way more effect on the overall vibe of a place or area than the looks do. I have no actual scientific proof of this, but I do have a nice example. Take this Japanese themed town from Paper Mario the Origami King for example. Take a guess on what type of music could be playing here. Did you guess something like this? Well, you would be correct if the footage I was showing you right now was from before you beat the main boss from this area. But this footage is from after that moment, giving you this BANGER! But in all seriousness, you can clearly hear that this town is super lively and far less desolate as you may have thought from only seeing the gameplay. Because this place in the game is actually a theme park. Now you could say that doesn't necessarily prove that music has more effect than looks, but what if I do another example, but this time the other way around. I'm going to play a theme from a game and you have to imagine the type of world or aesthetic that fits with this song. Did you guess a snow type of world or something Christmas related? Well, then you would be correct, because this song plays in the snow theme world of Kirby's Epic Yarn. It is way easier to fill in the missing looks than to fill in the missing music. When you hear just this theme, there's really only one answer you could give to this to fill in the looks. On the contrary, the Japanese theme park you saw could have gone multiple ways with its music and you would have probably never guessed it's a theme park in the first place without hearing the hype music for it. Now I'm not saying the aesthetic and looks don't provide any atmosphere, the opposite actually, but sound definitely has the upper hand and I would say it's about a 60-40 split in importance. Video game music is actually the thing that gives me a lot of inspiration for making my videos. Sometimes I can even create an entire movie inside my head by just hearing the family Super Mario Galaxy theme for example. So it's no surprise that I sometimes spend quite some time looking for music that fits perfectly into a specific section of my video to create the right vibe I'm going for. And that is exactly what music and sound design does. The looks and aesthetic may show you literally what type of area you're in, but the music creates the specific vibe for it, making Hollow Knight's entire atmosphere absolutely perfect to the minute detail. Now that you know what makes music and sound design so important, let's actually get into the Hollow Knight part and start with its area music. Again, 
I'm not an expert on this field, so don't expect any professional terms or music theories coming out of my mouth. I'm just here to tell you what the music and sound design does to elevate the Hollow Knight atmosphere. The music from Hollow Knight just finds a way to perfectly set the vibe of each area in the game and makes you feel fully immersed in its world. So let's start us off with two classic areas from the game to show you the power of Hollow Knight's music. Right from the get go when you start the game you'll get into Dirtmouth. You'll hear this somber and lonely track play. At least that is probably how you'll perceive it in the beginning. Because later when you have rescued different NPCs from the depths down below, the music that plays in Dirtmouth starts to feel more welcoming and cozy, even though it is still the exact same track playing. Although it starts off sounding like a really lonely song, it ends up as one of the least loneliest tracks of the game. Continuing your path, you'll get to the Forgotten Crossroads. And you can immediately hear that you've entered an abandoned world or an ancient mysterious place. I always overlooked this track when playing the game. But the moment I actually took the time to sit down and fully listen to the music of the Forgotten Crossroads, I realized that this track is so much better and has so much more to it than I initially thought. It is mostly a calm song, since this is the very first area you'll be exploring. However, along the song you have these intense, what I can only recognize as string sounds, that still give you this sense of mystery and, most importantly, danger. And oh boy, is there danger. Whenever you've made it to this room and walk a bit further to the right, you are trapped in this small arena. The thing is, to make this room feel more threatening, although two of these aspects are not really that scary, Team Cherry makes use of adaptive music. There's a really good video on adaptive music made by Scruffy, where he covers the Pikmin 3 boss themes, since that purely uses that type of music. But to explain it to you briefly, it is music where you can add or remove layers to it in a seamless transition to fit the current vibe you're in. Since you're now in an arena, drums are added and start going down, and the strings start to go absolutely ham. This small change makes for a really solid battle track, even though at its core it is still the Forgotten Crossroads team. Of course this is not the only track where they use adaptive music, because they consistently use this trick throughout most of the areas in the entire game. In Green Path for example, no wrong one wrong one, in Green Path for example when you reach this crystal dash section, the music starts getting really intense, because you're in a place full of spikes and you need to pull off some tight platforming. Or take Crystal Peaks for example. Whenever you reach the Crystal Guardian, the boss of this area, some intense percussion is added to the main track to set the stage for this fight. I mean, why make a completely new boss team if you can also do this, right? And honestly, this fits the Crystal Guardian way better than making a completely new track for him. Since it is not really a hard boss at all, and he basically just feels like a strong enemy, so this fitted him perfectly. Heck, some songs are even entirely built up using this trick, like The Path of Pain, a song that gradually gets more and more intense the farther you get into the platforming.
Adaptive music is not only about adding layers though, it's also about removing layers. Whenever you reach specific rooms, mostly the ones far away from the center of an area, any additional instrument is removed and you'll basically just be left with only the main melody, like right here at the top of Green Path where you can first encounter Zoad. I love that they added this as well. It makes it feel more lonely and forgotten, which is perfect because you are at the very edge of Green Path where there's not really a lot of green to be found anymore. It was so who burnt this area, wasn't it? The additions and subtractions to these tracks are pretty simple, yet so effective. Simply adding or removing a few sounds or changing the tempo of an instrument that was already there can change the entire vibe of the specific room you're in. The beauty of adaptive music is that no matter how complicated, simple or weird the track is, it always works and you will always be able to hear the core of the song to still give you the vibe of your respective area. Now we can't conclude this section without talking about some of the other amazing area music this game has to enhance the atmosphere. So I picked some of my favorites and the ones that stand out to really give you an idea on what Team Cherry is capable of. To start off we have The Resting Grounds. The song accompanying this area is very peaceful and calming. The piano music here makes The Resting Grounds really relaxing, but the music also has a sad undertone to it. This is perfect, since The Resting Grounds are basically a graveyard for the fallen warriors. So it's calm and peaceful because there isn't really any danger here, no enemies inside, but it's also still sad because this area is basically a collection of dead bugs. Including Quirrell. Then, Queen's Gardens. The most beautiful looking area in my opinion. The music is very similar to Green Paths in that it makes the place feel lively and wondrous. And since the main instrument of this team is the harp, the gardens also feel very sacred and royal, making it feel like you're exploring a beautiful shrine of some sorts. Now, I chose this next one because of how unique it is. The song that plays in the dream world is an interesting one, because it's almost not even a song, yet it's such a perfect fit. The track basically consists of random notes of violin without cohesion stopping and starting at random moments, but it's still one of the most relaxing songs out of the entire soundtrack. It all makes perfect sense though. A dream is unpredictable, random and weird. And to dream in the first place, you need to be relaxed and asleep. And that is perfectly transcripted into a song, making the dream areas feel mysterious, weird and peaceful. What is not so peaceful though, is Soul Sanctum. The spooky music playing here with an organ as the main instrument, making it feel like you're about to attend some funeral or something, later realizing it's probably your funeral, it's just perfect. This place is all about the stolen soul from the poor bugs, so the spooky music fits perfectly with these depressed looking bugs, and every time I hear this music, I get a little depressed as well. It's a cool song though, don't worry. The music just does its job really well. And last but not least, the City of Tears. We can't talk about Hollow Knight's area music without talking about the City of Tears, because this might possibly be the most beautiful song of the entire soundtrack. It perfectly encapsulates the feeling of a giant reigning city with its main melody actually being done by opera singing, which is perfect for a gigantic place like this. This is the place where most people fell in love with the game because of how much of an impact this area had to newcomers. 
and to be more specific, the impact the beginning of City of Tears had. When you've just entered the area from the Hegemol Gate, you'll be locked up in a completely new environment, which is definitely a scary thing in this game. Upon seeing the rain drip down the glass and meeting your good friend Quirrell telling you a little bit about the city, you take one last elevator down to the ground level to set your first step in the actual city. The perfect use of adaptive music right there. The moment you actually enter the city, the more intense and beautiful the music gets. It makes this area feel ginormous and gorgeous once you set foot on the main area. Which it is. It is a phenomenal moment that hooked many players. All with the power of Hollow Knight's music. Hollow Knight's boss music is epic. Duh. In most games it's just cool music to get you hyped up for the boss you're fighting. And a lot of games really know how to make the most epic music for these moments. Mario and Pokemon being the standout here in my opinion. And although Hollow Knight may not have the most epic tracks compared to other games, they are once again great at building a ton of atmosphere for the game. Take this pretty generic boss music called Decisive Battle for example. It is used for quite a few bosses and there's definitely nothing wrong with it, it does its job. However, when you're fighting the Collector on the other hand, they give the track a complete 180 and make it sound all wobbly with a lot of false notes because the Collector is a crazy character. Added on to the fact while you battle him, you can constantly hear his creepy laughs. It immediately establishes him on what he's like. From the music alone, you just know that you should probably keep your distance from him because he's a little crazy. And that's what's so great about the boss music from this game. It establishes characters and it shows what they are like without even having met them. One of my favorite tracks from the soundtrack is Dung Defenders. The boss music is really energetic, heroic and most importantly, fun. This track is not trying to intimidate you to make Dung Defender look like a scary opponent. It's the opposite actually. Fighting Dung Defender feels like a light-hearted one-on-one -on -one combat. Added on to the fact that Dung Defender is always laughing while battling and literally fighting with balls of shit instead of a normal weapon, you just know from this music that Dung Defender is a cool guy not trying to do any harm to people on purpose. Now that's great, you don't often see boss music used as a way to show what a character is like. But how well does Hollow Knight's boss music function for the most important part of any video game boss music? That being, building up tension for the player. We all know Hollow Knight's bosses are pretty hard. What people may underestimate though is that part of that difficulty comes from how the music impacts on our ability to play well. Take a look at one of the final battles of Pokemon Sword and Shield against Chairman Rose. The game overall is fairly easy, just like this fight. But oh my god, when the music kicks in, I have shitted my pants over 20 times already because he is the overlord of all Pokemon or something. And then you just press a super effective move to win. And Hollow Knight's boss music is of course also very great at setting the stage and building up a lot of tension. Now, I'm not saying the bosses are easy without the music, but let's say if you fight Pure Vessel for example, one of the hardest bosses in the game, with this music in the background... You'll definitely be less stressed and it'll make the fight a little easier overall. All of the boss tracks do a really good job at building tension. However, there are two boss fights in particular that I want to cover in this video because they are not only excellent at building the atmosphere and tension, they also make great usage of sound design elements that will make your heart rate go from 100 BPM to a healthy 420. Nice. Starting it off with a fan favorite boss fight, Nightmare King Grim. First of all, most banging track of the entire OST. This track has many sections to it that go from okay, this is pretty intense to 
I believe the different parts of the track are not triggered by how far you've progressed in the fight, but that doesn't seem to matter since the music always seems to line up with the entire duration of the fight. And so, the farther you'll get into the fight, the more intense it's going to get. However, there's a little sound design element added to it to make it even more stressful. You can actually hear the heart in the background beat, progressively getting faster and louder as you progress through the fight. And let me tell you, that little element adds a lot to your stress level. However, that is not even Hollow Knight's most stressful and intense boss track. Introducing Absolute Radiance Not only is she the hardest boss in the game by a mile, the music may also be the most stress inducing out of them all. The track is as epic as you could expect from fighting a god. Just like Nightmare King Grimm's track, the song has a lot of different sections to it, getting more intense the longer you fight her. Here's the cherry on top though. Whenever you reach the climbing phase, the music just completely stops, and the only thing you'll hear are these wind chimes that you've been hearing throughout the start and end of every pantheon. In this phase, you'll need to climb to the top while Absolute Radiance is shooting beams of light at you that get more accurate the higher you go, finishing it all off in the final phase at the top where you need to do the last bit of damage while she tries to end you with her tracking spears. Also, did I forget to mention that this is at the end of Pantheon 5 consisting of 41 other bosses that you've beaten before, meaning you need to do it all over again if you die right here at the end, even though it's not really the hardest thing to do, but because you have so much stress and anxiety from the wind chimes and the lack of music and the thought of redoing it all over again that you are most likely gonna die? No? Well, that's also a thing. Absolute Radiance is hard, yes, but believe me, like 50% of the difficulty comes from the atmosphere built up by the music, or should I say, lack of music. And, and of course the fact that it's at the end of Pantheon 5. It doesn't matter how much you've practiced her, the nerves will probably get the best of you. All because of the tension built up by this great boss music and some sound design. Speaking of... I did not only want to cover just the music from this game, because there's a lot of great sound design in this game that enhances the atmosphere, sometimes even having a much greater effect than regular old music does. We covered sound design a bit in the last section with the heartbeat and wind chimes, and you can clearly see that sound design is just as important as music is in building an atmosphere. And sometimes it's even more important and the music is scrapped entirely. You might have noticed when we talked about the area music that I clearly skipped a few areas not even showing footage of them. That's because these areas don't even have music playing in the background. All the atmosphere is made by purely using sound design. And there's actually quite a few areas where they chose to do this. In particular, Howling Cliffs, Ancient Basin, Royal Waterways, The Hive, Deep Nest and Fog Canyon. Yes, five areas. However, Far Canyon is an interesting case. There is actual music playing here. If you listen closely, you can hear a faint version of Green Path's track in the background. Since the Far Canyon is right next to Green Path and is basically just a continuation of the area, they use the same track but alter it a bit with sound design to fit the foggy and bubbly vibe this area is going for. It now sounds like the Green Path track is basically just playing underwater, which couldn't be more fitting. Now, why am I talking about this area in the sound design section then? Well, that's because this area's quote-unquote music is not in the official OST of this game. The Green Path music is just used as a base for the atmosphere they were trying to create with sound design. Now, all the other areas I listed, however, are all using their own unique sound design with no music inside to back it up. And you may think to yourself, 
But why don't they use actual music in the background? That's because the atmosphere they are trying to create for these areas is supposed to be unsettling. Let's take a dive into the royal waterways to show you what I mean. Hollow Knight is a game about bugs in a giant underground world, so you can't expect every place to be happy and peaceful. When you enter this area, you'll be greeted with some long and slow unnerving cello and violin sounds. The waterways are known as the most disgusting area of them all, and the things that live here would most likely haunt your dreams for at least a good week. Except for me, because I'm dating this fluke of course. However, as a new player, you probably don't know this at all. So when you're trying to explore this place, the sound design will keep you on edge at every moment. Sound design is not only about the literal background sounds you can hear though, it's also about literally everything else you can hear. From sound effects to some ambient noise, you name it. Since you are in the sewers, they made everything sound all echoey. From your nail swings to your spells, it makes the atmosphere here all the more unsettling and creepier. So whenever you do encounter one of these beautiful creatures with their majestic sounds, the echo in this area makes it so that you can hear a lot of things that are outside of your viewing range. Making exploring this area <laughs> an absolute trip. Especially since the flukes have an extra little surprise for you after you supposedly kill them. All the way hidden in the corner though, you can find the hive. Now the hive is also unsettling of course, but in a totally different way. It's not going for the creepy type of unsettling, but more in a way that danger could be lurking everywhere. The hive is an isolated area from the rest, because the bees don't want anything to do with the outside world. So whenever you do enter this place, it feels like pure enemy territory. The sounds playing in the background are just intense notes of an instrument that I can't really identify because over that sound is just millions and millions of bees zooming in your ear, definitely giving you an unwelcome feeling. God, do I love bees so much. Then you also have places like the Howling Cliffs and Asian Basin. These places are so desolate and abandoned that the only sound playing in the background is, well, howling winds. And honestly, it's the best way to create an aesthetic like that. Now, when I uploaded my area ranking video, there were quite some people upset with my placements on the lower half of the list. Because that lower half basically consisted of all these areas we just talked about. Now, it's okay to disagree of course, but people thought I ranked them unfairly because they do such a good job at building atmosphere. However, that can literally be said for all of them. So when I had to pick favorites and least favorites, I don't think it was that weird for me to pick the unsettling areas as the bottom picks. They are just not my favorites to traverse, but nothing caused more controversy than me putting this area at the bottom of my list. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Deep Nest. Deep Nest is so disturbing, unsettling and creepy that Hollow Knight could literally be mistaken for a mild horror game by just seeing this area. The unnerving sounds to create the most uncomfortable ambience here is just insane. And I swear someone is like literally activating a chainsaw in the background or something. The atmosphere for this dark maze full of spiders and other creepy crawlers is absolutely perfect. The reason that I'm upset that people can't see why I put this area so low in my ranking is because the atmosphere is way too well done and I am not a fan of the unsettling horror vibe personally. Now that isn't to say that it's badly designed, that's the farthest from the truth you can get. 
If I would have done like an objective ambience ranking, Deepness would have been number one, no doubt. And since I'm not a fan of the horror ambience, placing it so low on my ranking is the biggest compliment Deepness could have received. Because it does what it is supposed to do way too well. It's really the best atmosphere I've ever seen in a game and that is mostly carried by that amazing sound design. It makes this area's atmosphere one of the best in any video game that I've ever played. Like, shitting my pants type of good. It is so good that I actually would like to leave. Um, guys? Where's the exit? Guys? Are the walls closing in? Is it just me or is there no oxygen in here? <gasps> Get me out! Get me out! <gasps> Two seconds later. Oh. 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 This is... Uh, it's oddly relaxing in here for Deep Nest. Oh. Let me take a little seat. Now, this music has nothing to do with sound design, but I want to give it its own little dedicated section here at the end of the music and sound design video to pay a little homage to my bench ranking as well. The bench theme, otherwise known as reflection in the OST, is the perfect music for you to relax and take a break. The gameplay of Hollow Knight can be intense and rough sometimes. Not everything will always go your way in the game. May it be a platforming section, a boss, or just a random tick tick that killed you. In these rooms you have time to reflect on your journeys and take a moment to breathe. And especially after all the intense things you have to go through, these are always my favorite moments in the game with the most relaxing music accompanying it. While we are here, let's reflect on Hollow Knight's music and sound design. There are probably so many things that we could have still talked about, but this video was just to show you the point and highlights of it all. Hollow Knight's atmosphere is just perfect and that is largely thanks to the music and sound design. From the OST itself, to the adaptive music, to the astounding detail within the sound design. It makes the world of Hollow Knight feel so alive and immersive and will always stay one of my favorite games purely for that reason alone. Thank you so much for tuning in and please feel free to share your favorite parts of the music and sound design of this game. I'm sure there's still a lot to talk about. Thank you so 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 much to my members like Bot One Place, Kuro, AV, Sofiane and Miss Mout. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And hey, you can consider becoming a member to get exclusive posts and emojis and most likely more in the future. But with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I'm signing off. Bye!